Welcome everybody to Rain's Ramblings. I have with me today Gaurav from Pune over in India. Gaurav, go ahead and introduce yourself. So yeah, this is Gaurav from Pune, which is uh, a smaller city in Western India, uh, 200 kilometers from Bombay. I am a software professional and yeah, I work in the uh, supply chain management uh, industry. Mm -hmm. So that's about, <laughs> that's pretty much about me. All right. And I, uh, for hobbies, I, I uh, read a lot. That's what I do most of the time. Uh, so yeah. What, what kind of books do you prefer? It's usually nonfiction, uh, history and yes. biographies and uh, a bit of science and take. Okay. All right. That's, and I mean, that's kind of. not reading that, I, uh, I read a PG Woodhouse or a, yeah, a PG Woodhouse mostly. Okay. I haven't heard of that one. Um, but I, th I think this is going to be a good one then because th one of the reasons why I started doing the whole cultural episodes is because I have a love of history. I don't read that much anymore, um, but I do like, you know, looking into things and why things used to be one way and how they are now. And you are going to be the third person from India that I've spoken to. And since I've done India, every single time I've done it, I've, I'm amazed every single time. Um, Cause if you, if you're not aware, I'm from America, right? I'm from the, uh, yes. South Carolina in America. And one of the things I come across every single time I speak to an individual from India is we weren't taught a lot of Indian history in, in, in cool. grade school for me growing up, you know, maybe other parts of the States, they were, they were taught more. Um, but where I, where I grew up, n not so much at all because I love architecture and, you know, buildings and, and ruins, temples and whatnot. And India as a whole has tons of them. They are everywhere yeah. and i see you now you just popped up yep my camera started working suddenly <laughs> all right um and i'm amazed every single time that i see some ancient building from thousands of years ago it doesn't matter how intricate and detailed that these temples or buildings what again whatever you want to call it are that i don't remember you know, in middle school history class or, you know, elementary history class, high school history class, I don't remember none of this. And I, so the first individual I spoke to was from Lucknow, uh, Umvesh, he, a young journalist over there. And then I've spoken to um, Aditya Singh, the artist from Mumbai. Uh, and every single time, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing the stuff, the new stuff that I come across from over there. So I, I've one day I hope to travel over there and visit the country. And I know it's so huge. That country is enormous. I won't be able to visit everywhere, you know, that I would love to. But that's definitely on the bucket list for sure. One thing I found about Pune, though, is kind of how you just said, you know, what your job is, is very uh it forward it's like the it capital i think one of the things said of india um there's a lot of young students that that come over there for educational purposes what do you think started that why is pune known as that but it all started about 15 to 16 years ago not before that mm -hmm. so uh, they uh, the government the local government came up with an experimental uh, it park uh, which is some 30 kilometers from where I live. Mm -hmm. And that happened to be very strategically located. Mm -hmm. So you get easy access to the highway to Bombay. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the reasons uh, that started the IT gold rush. Okay. Okay. So, because access to Bombay matters a lot. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's the biggest, biggest city in the area, right? Yes, you can yes. say that. It's the financial capital of India. There you go. So that matters a lot. Oh, for sure. So, Definitely. Uh, the, the part that came up 
uh, is very conveniently located on your way to Bombay from Pune. Okay. So that was one of the reasons, and uh, then th- there is a uh, si- more than a sizable pool of talented engineers and mm-hmm. uh, all the software professionals and architects uh, that you have access to. So mm-hmm. that's what uh, got started about fifteen to in two thousand three, two thousand four. Mm-hmm. Was that the like? Did the government put that in place, or was yes. that some company? No, it was uh, the it was government uh, project. Okay, so I mean that seems to have worked out pretty well for that city then. Yes, yes, it has. Although it has uh, thrown up a uh, lot many uh, new challenges in terms okay. of infrastructure and traffic yeah. and all that. Mm-hmm. But uh, yes, it has worked out well. Well, that's good. That's always good to hear. Um, yes. One of the things I came across as well that I looked that fascinated me was one art. I think it was the the magazine, The Independent, coined Pune as the, the uh, motor city of India. You guys have a lot of automobile corporations um, yes. that, that are like have headquarters there. So as I said, uh, the IT uh, thing started just 15 to 16 years ago. Mm-hmm. But the automobile uh, companies have been here uh, since before India's independence 72 mm-hmm. years ago. So they uh, that started in 1940s. Yeah, I, so, one of the go ahead. No, oh, go ahead. Oh well, one of the ones I looked at because I'm I'm not like a car guy in a sense. I work on my own car, but I like cars. I like looking at them. Started in 1940s when mm-hmm. Tata's the the owners of JLR set up a uh, set up an automobile factory in Pune. Mm-hmm. And uh, since uh, then, uh, several other companies have uh, followed this route. And uh, most of the automobile, major automobile companies uh, in from Europe, like mm, the yeah. Audi Group, uh, yes. and some others also ha- now have some presence in Pune. It's either information technology, research and development, or something. Which is the one that the guy started, the first name you mentioned? Tata's. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Nope. Tata I came group. across that one. Yeah. The, the one that I came across was Force. Force Automobile. Force is also there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think it, it, it seemed to be mainly like vans and like Jeep little vehicles yes. and whatnot. Um, but I like look at like, again, I'm not car guy in the sense I work on my own, but when the new stuff comes out, it's always cool to look at. So what got you into wanting to do, you know, the IT, everything? Was it just because it was so dominant over there? Yeah. Uh, as I said, uh, we have a uh, more than a decent pool of uh, IT graduates, engineers, architects in, in a variety of uh, roles. So uh, I, one was uh, the government uh, came up with a really good initiative to encourage uh, IT uh, sector. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two, uh, as I said, uh, the first of the IT park or most of the IT parks are strategically located. And uh, there is this uh, access to this large pool of engineers at a very competitive price. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, uh, this combination of factors has uh, really helped uh, Pune emerge as as an IT hub. Although Mm -hmm. this, uh, the the Silicon Valley of India, so to speak, yeah. uh, remains Bangalore. Okay. When, when you were young, uh, what is it that you wanted to become? I have a hard time seeing like an eight-year-old kid saying, I want to be an IT guy, you know? When I was growing up, IT was not even a thing. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it all started uh, much later. Okay. Uh, when I was growing up, I... I really don't know what I wanted to become or if, <laughs> even if I had uh, any clear idea about it. Yeah. 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 I think I, I was probably like, you know, the usual like astronaut, you know, uh, you know, cowboy, maybe Din- dinosaur, of course, like when you're five or six, you want to be a dinosaur, Batman, yes. that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> um, so are you born and raised in Pune? Yes. Okay. I was, I was born in Mumbai, raised right. in Pune. All right. Have you been, because again, India is enormous. Have yes. you been to any other areas? 
I have been to Hyderabad. If you know Hyderabad, no, sir. Uh, it's uh, another uh, IT hub, a major IT okay. hub. It's bigger uh, than Pune. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I have been there once or twice, or maybe thrice. And then mm-hmm. Bombay, I keep uh, shuttling between. Okay. Have you been outside the country? No. No. Do no, you want yet. to? If you could. Yes. In fact, I was planning to visit the United States this year, but because of this COVID thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, that kind of put the not. whole world at at a stop. Yeah. yeah. Where Where so were you I, planning on going over uh, here? My sister lives in Boston. Oh, okay, okay. That's cool. That's cool, man. Uh, hopefully, that can all work out for you two some sometime next year. Hopefully, this yes. crap clears Let's up. See now. Yeah. Um. That's, that's going to be a big difference, though. Uh, Boston from India? You got yes. hot and cold, right? <laughs> Indeed. Her husband <laughs> has been there uh, for 30 years, I think. Okay. All right. Well, I hope that works out for you guys. Everything clears up sometime next year or even sooner, hopefully. Because, um, yeah, like, even with me, like, I've, I've, you know, I've speak, spoken to people from all over now. And each one's like, when you come in, when you coming over, I was like, dude, like, I can't go anywhere, man. Like, one, nobody's letting Americans in any country just about, you know, <laughs> so we got to deal with that. Um, but that's the plan. That is the plan. I spoke with actually Aditya this morning a little bit to ask him um, if he knew anything about uh, Pune. And what he, he said, he, he wasn't that familiar with Pune besides the fact that it has such a large group of young students um, going there for education. So correct me if I'm wrong, it seems Pune is huge in IT and software development on one hand, and then you got this thriving education system. Uh, Yeah, it has been uh, a thing for many, many years. In fact, long before Pune became uh, the IT hub, Oh, really? Pune was uh, known as the Oxford of the East. Yes, I came across that as well. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, yeah, people from all, students from all over India come here to study. Well, that's cool. That's always cool. Yeah, there are uh, almost every college in Pune is at least 100 year uh, in age. Wow. Okay. That, that's yeah. cool. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah, that was one thing. And one other thing that I find every time when I talk to people from outside the States is, you know, the States is only as America, excuse me, is only a few hundred years old, but almost every other country developed, you know, uh, uh, civilization out there is like hundreds, if not thousands of years old, you know, so there's a, a huge amount of history anywhere else that you go for the most part. And India is definitely one of them. India has been around, you know, as a civilized society for ever, ever, uh, um, thousands and thousands of thousands years. and thousands of years. And it's so big. There's so many people from all over. You got every religion, probably somebody easily from every nation, you know, everyone just living together. And it's it's definitely a bucket list country that I need to visit that I never would have imagined before I started doing my podcast. I never would have imagined. I like, I, you know, you look at like the statues and everything. Oh, that's cool. You know, but since I started talking to people from over there, like Mvesh, Aditya, you, sir, Garov, I'm like, I got to go there. So that's my bucket list. You come to Boston, I'll go to India. Everything will be great. Um, So, what what are some of like the local foods? Because I'm a foodie. Everyone loves food, right? This one here. Yes. Uh, so foods, uh, the, the hyper local cuisine is mm-hmm. all pure vegetarian. Really? Yeah. Oh pure man, that, that's, that's, that's a bummer for me. I don't like vegetables. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, most people, although not most, but uh, a mm. lot of us do eat, but uh, we are predominantly vegetarian. Every day we eat vegetarian food yeah. and once in a while, meat is a once in a while thing. Is is that a, for religious purposes or just because? Just 
No, there are two reasons behind it. Religion definitely plays a role yes. in everything we do. Yes, that's yes. how this country is. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And another reason, it it was uh, in the old olden times. It was a very practical. It was for a very practical reason that uh, your the, your food intake was decided by the work you do. Okay. So if you uh, if your work involved a lot of physical activity, physical strain. Yeah, and it required a lot of physical strength. Then you were allowed to eat meat. Oh, for the protein so, and everything. Yeah, for protein, yes. for energy, heat, and uh, if on the other hand your work involved a lot of brainy stuff. Yeah, you did a, a sedentary job. Yes. A okay. Clinical position or rituals or something. Then you did not need that kind of protein intake yeah. and all that thing. So you ate a uh, simple food. That, you know, I mean, uh, from a nutritional standpoint, that makes a lot of sense. That yes. definitely makes a lot of sense. Because, yeah, you, you know, you see the, the the bodybuilders and, you know, athletic individuals loading up on, on you know, chickens and, and re- your red yep. meats and whatnot. But that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So so what is, if, even though I'm, I'm not a fan, what would be your go-to dish? Your go-to dish. Uh, we usually uh, gorge on uh, the South Indian uh, mm-hmm. snacks like dosa and idli, uh, which are uh, made of uh, rice flour, and uh, also things like pav bhaji. It's a, uh, it's like a, I don't know, a lot of vegetables mixed together with a lot of masala, and you eat it with bread. It's quite good actually. All right, um, I, I think I'm about to pull up the what you said, dosa. Yep, D O S A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a second. I'm about to pull that up. Boom. Talking about this. Yes, that's it. Okay, that looks like a um, like a crepe. You know, a little, little, little it, thin, thin yes, pancake. It, it does. Yes. Okay. And so is this, this looks like a primarily maybe breakfast food? It's a breakfast item, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, you got your eggs and everything. That that looks good. That looks good. I'm, I can do it's that. It's not eggs. It's not eggs. Oh, that's what is potato. that? That's potatoes. Oh, see, that's even better, man. That's even better. I can do <laughs> potatoes. I can do potatoes. That's what you see here is potatoes and the, the curry you see is sambar. And then Come on, you have right over here. Yes, and then you have a coconut chutney. A coconut. Say that one more time. Chutney. What is that? That sounds familiar. It's spicy uh, sauce. Okay. All right. All right. We'll see. That as as one thing that I know I'll be in trouble for, whenever I get around to going to India, I'm not a fan of spice. I'm not a fan of spicy foods. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a misunderstanding or it's a misperception that Indian food is spicy. Okay. It's true that we are uh, we are big on spices, but that mm-hmm. there is a variety of spices because India has been uh, the India was once known as the queen of spices. Yes. So no surprise is that uh, we we are generous with spices, but not all spices are uh, hot. They don't pack a lot of heat. Okay. Well, that that would be good for me then. Cause yeah, there are a lot of I don't aromatic do that. spices <laughs> or flavorful spices. Good, good. I, I'm looking forward to that then. What What was the other thing you said after the uh, dosa? Oh, bhaji. Bhaji. How, how do you spell that one? B-H-A-J-I. 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 Oh, this looks good. What is? Explain this one. This one looks good. I like that. You're looking at pav bhaji. I'm about to bring it up right now. Is this it? No, that's that's bhaji. That's pakoda. That's fritters. So oh. you scroll scroll down a bit. Scroll down. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. Here you see pav bhaji uh, on your left. Oh, pa- pav bhaji. Yep. All right. Let me put that one in there then, and explain this one a little bit. So uh, there is a mixture of vegetables. You uh, fry them together. You cook them together. There, there is okay. a special masala for that, which is spice okay. mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A special spice mix, and you cook it. Uh, cook the vegetables with that, and uh, you eat it with bread, pow bread, which is an Indian bread. 
so it's it's like you 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 dip it. Yeah, if you, you dip, dip it, it. With, with the bread. Okay, yep. that's cool. I mean, chips and dip are a big thing over here that that I love. So this thing, I'm and all for you have this to be generous well. with butter. You have to be generous. Oh yeah, <laughs> got to have the butter. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. You, what what you were talking about the bread? It's a special kind of bread. It's pow. What does that taste like? Like if you if you had to compare it to, like. Wheat bread. It's soft. It's freight. It's a. It's a. It's a normal bread. Okay. Uh, okay. Not wheat bread. Uh, mm-hmm. It's made of uh, common flour. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it that is called in America. Common uh, flour. Yeah, yeah. We call it maida. Maida. Yeah. Okay. So All right. It's like your uh, sliced bread. Gotcha. All right. So just regular old. Just bread. a different uh, method. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Softer. I got you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. What about some of the uh, local drinks? Because, oh, I came across one. Sorry, sorry to cut you off right there. Um, Duda or Doda? Dude. Oh, okay. Because I had an H at the inside. Yeah. What is is that? Dude is milk. But it's milk with something else, right? That depends on what drink you're looking at so we have something called uh, uh, there are a variety of uh, flavored milks that you get mm-hmm. here so uh, and a variety of uh, milk based uh, desserts okay so you have basundi which is really really thick milk thick milk yeah really really thick all right yeah see this is uh, then you have faluda which is uh, again sweet uh, thing uh, mm-hmm. added uh, with a lot of stuff added in it dry fruits and yeah 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 uh, kind of uh, local noodles okay it's it's a dessert not a drink actually it's a dessert but all right is, uh, in consistency it is like a drink okay but i got you i got you i think the one i was, it was this one up here with the soda and that just that just sounds odd. Believe me, I've never tried that. This is the first time I'm seeing this. Yeah, and it, it's like you got the creaminess of milk with the, you know, fizziness of, of a soda, and I'm like, I, I I don't know about that one. You know, I'm I'm not sure if I would want to try <laughs> <Exactly>. that. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> yeah, that one looks a little bit too weird. Um, it is. And <laughs> I have not seen this anywhere. Seriously, I've not seen this anywhere. It came from Atlas Obscura. Let's see if it, if it if they show about where where to, like maybe a restaurant possibly in the Punjab region. Oh no no no! So I I just read something. So what the, uh, they are adding a fizzy drink. Mm-hmm of uh, uh, of your choice to a glass of milk. Mm-hmm. That's still weird, though. It is weird. It is very weird. <laughs> it's very, very, Punjab, very much. Pakistani Punjab. Yeah. And uh, Northern India. Northern region. Uh, yeah. In the Punjab region of Pakistan and Northern India. All right. All right. Yeah, that, that's another thing that I've come across every time I speak with you know, somebody from India is like you over there in Pune and Mumbai, you guys are probably similar, right? In, in cultures mm-hmm. or whatnot. Yes. But you go three hours north, three hours south, whatever, and it's a different world. Still India, yes. but a different world. Um, yes. And and that's that's one of the cool things as, as an American that I come across because even if I go to the other side of the country, like in California, because I'm on the East Coast. So if I go to the far West Coast in Cali, it's different, but very similar. Right? I, I can still talk, you know, with everybody over there. But you guys, if you go three or whatever hours, sometimes even an hour one way, it's different religion. Uh, I've seen, you know, different, well, different religion sometimes too, but different language as well. Yes. So... You obviously you speak English. I, I'm assuming you also speak Hindi. Hindi as well as Marathi, uh, which is Marathi. a local language. 
Okay. Mal- Malarkey. Marathi. Yeah. M A R A T H I. Okay. Okay. All right. Um. So you know English, Malarkey, and a a a, a bit of Hindi. You said. No, I uh, I know a good amount of Hindi. Uh, okay. Okay. Um. But there are th- hundreds, pro- probably even th- thousands, maybe of dialects. Uh, no, hundreds of dialects. Hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. 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 Um. Do, do we you have f- a couple of dozens of main languages mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, we have hundreds of dialects so it in the earlier times it was said that uh, you uh, you will hear a different dialect and the water you drink will taste different every 12 miles every 12 miles that's yeah. that, that's a cool little phrase i like that it's a nice little phrase yes Because I, I I know don't, I don't know about the water, but uh, yeah, yes, yeah, you will definitely the, the, hear a different, a slightly different, different uh, dialect uh, or vocabulary uh, mm-hmm. every few miles. Yeah, we we at least sort of have that, and like I live in the south, so some would say I have a southern uh, accent. But then, like with your sister up in Boston, that act, the Boston accent is totally different than what I have. Same as you go to New York, you know, you, New York is famous for it, the their accent, right. West Coast accent, you know, all, all pretty pretty similar. I, I would assume. One of the things I looked into that I liked, and I always like bringing up, is the different festivals that are in different countries and cultures, and Pune is essentially pretty big on. It's the festival that celebrates the arrival of Ganesh on September 10th. How, how is that one pronounced? I don't, I don't want to butcher it. It's Ganesh. You, you're right. It's Ganesh. Mm-hmm. But Ganesh what, what festival. That, that, the, the, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. a 10-day festival uh, in which we celebrate, we worship, uh, we bring uh, Lord Ganesha, the idols of Lord Ganesha, Mm-hmm. Yeah, you see, these are the these are massive idols. Yes. Uh, but at home we have much smaller ones. Oh yeah. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you will see them in all shapes and sizes and all uh, with all expressions. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it depends on your creativity. And you, uh, we have the ten day festival to honor him, to celebrate, to worship him. Mm-hmm. uh it's a, a we do that we have do a very elaborate puja which is a, a ritual a worship ritual mm-hmm. uh morning and evening during those 10 days and on the 10th day we do the visarjan we immerse the uh, the idols in uh, in in water either okay. the local river or sea or whatever is a, uh, available to you accessible to you so that's a 10 day festival and uh, diwali is celebrated across india so yeah we do all, we celebrate diwali also which is due next week are you all going to be able to do it i am not sure <laughs> yeah yeah so there won't yeah. be any public festivities this year definitely not yeah but do do a but, little something uh, at yeah, home you know at home yeah have you been to like the big crowd festival like that oh, yes you yeah. cannot is you cannot escape big crowds during oh, the yeah? pandemic cannot our our work day is that like a, a national holiday where everyone's off from work uh, the ganpati festival no the first day and the last day are holidays okay so everyone has a day off to go out and celebrate and the others yes. are just who's available essentially yes all right that's cool man that's like we we, ha- we don't have stuff like that um like we have we have our own festivals we have you know you, you know parades essentially like for new year's coming up we'll have that yep. they canceled thanksgiving well the macy's thanksgiving day parade in new york was canceled uh halloween here last night you know because we had is halloween's not that big in india is it no it is not okay people know about it yeah but, uh, it's it's not a big thing in india no yeah Well, we we did ours last night, and with the whole COVID thing, you know, going to people's houses, kind kind of frowned upon. Right now, some people did it, but they did it in like unique ways. 
So you would see families like on their porch and they would have like a PVC pipe, a tube, and they would slide the candy down to the kids, you know? So that way, you know, the kids still got to walk around and all that kind of stuff. So that was nice. That was nice to see. Um, yeah. I know me and my family, we, we had a, a few friends over last night. We were dressed up, uh, still, still was able to do something in the home where we were all, you know, okay and not a burden and all that whatnot to everybody. Lord, That's Lord, didn't... at least some respite during these trouble times. Yes. Oh, yeah. You, you got to have fun. You got to find a way True. to have fun and not let everything bring you down. Because I, I'm sure in India as well, because it's here in, in the States, there's been an uptick in like suicides, depression for sure. You know, it's 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 a sad thing. You know, the 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 world's going through right now. That yeah, it's just a sad thing. That hopefully we all can get through. The sooner the better. Yeah. The sooner the better. Um, Lord Ganesh, though, if you don't mind me asking, if you don't mind me asking, what is he? Because in in the Hindu religion, there's numerous gods, correct? Yes, there are. What what is Lord Ganesh the god of? He is a god of uh, good times, as in good not times. rivalry, but mm -hmm. uh, prosperous times, mm -hmm. happy times. Mm -hmm. So his arrival signifies that. Is would would it be safe to say that he's like the 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 top god in in Hindu in Hinduism? No. Or no, is no, no, is there no, no. no nothing like that? So there is a holy trinity. Okay. That's that's at the very top. Okay. There is Brahma, there is Vishnu, there is Mahesh. Okay, Lord Ganesh okay. is uh is believed to be the son of Lord Shiva. He's I I know that name, yes. Yeah, yeah, Lord Shiva. And he uh, if, if other parts of India don't are not that big on celebrating mm -hmm. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Maharashtra is and some other parts, mm -hmm. the southern parts, but that's pretty much it. If you mm -hmm. go north, uh, it's not a big thing. Okay, is is it something else up there? Uh, yeah, they have uh, they celebrate uh, they celebrate and worship Durga Ma, uh, a, a goddess, goddess Durga, mm -hmm. and uh, they are big on uh, Shiva worshiping. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, now again, if. If it's okay to ask, because I know religion is a touchy subject, and I don't want to offend anybody. Um, Not with me, so it's it's okay. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, for anybody out there, if I offend you, I'm sorry. I'm an ignorant American. I'm trying to learn. <laughs> um, with, with, with a religion like Hinduism, where there is so many various gods, and you have your Holy Trinity, and like I said, where you're at, it seems to be mainly Lord Ganesh, but up north. It's the other. What do you think causes that difference? Like, why are you guys more on Ganesh and there? You know what I'm saying? So India is not populated with one kind of population. Yes. There are several different subgroups. Mm -hmm. How many you can't even count? Oh, I <laughs> have different uh, histories. They have their different traditions. They have different roots. So some of us uh, came from, say, uh, Persia. Some of us came from up north uh, in the, uh, from some place in Russian Federation. Mm -hmm. uh, some others came from Southeast Asia. Some of us went from here to there. Some mm -hmm. Indians, uh, a generation of Indians migrated to Europe and came uh, to the Roma people. Yes, they have their they have their India. Mm -hmm. So all this migration happened, and uh, every single group actually uh, retained their their traditions, their customs, their methods of worship, the gods they worship, and it has somehow survived. All that has survived. Yeah, despite foreign occupations, despite mm -hmm. foreign invasions, conquests. Uh, the 800 years under uh, Muslim rule, 200 years under British rule, mm -hmm. all that has survived and that it's a miracle. Yes. Yes, because I mean, 
If you look at all the countries the British occupied, you know, I, I think at one point they occupied like half the world. Yes. I'm probably wrong, but yeah, yeah they occupied a, they did. Yes, they occupied a lot. And a lot of those m- more so smaller countries, their religion or their cultures kind of got wiped out for the most part. True. True. But luckily, and it's probably because of the sheer size of India, it's hard to take all that away. You know, you, you can occupy and control the big cities like the Mumbai's, the New Delhi's or whatnot, probably fairly easily. But when you go to Mumbai those... Mumbai and Delhi were built by them. <laughs> oh, oh, see? There. <laughs> <laughs> but then you go to, like, to the small village towns that never really got touched. That oh. art, that culture, the... Uh, tradition stayed and weren't really affected because i know I, I have some friends in ireland and they were occupied as well yes. by by british rule so much so that their original language the irish language essentially kind of died out for a while it wasn't written down it was all you know verbal so it was yeah. orally spoken and it was only after they gained their independence and they kind of fought to bring it back, you know? So they're slowly trying to teach it in schools to the younger generation to bring it back. Cause it was quote, you know, essentially lost for a generation or two under, under British, under the rule of England and whatnot. Um, but yeah, like uh, I've spoken twice with Australia and Australia was also occupied by, you know, Britain for, for so long. And, but again, that's just, that's a huge freaking continent. You know, yes. it, it's hard it's hard to take everything away. So even they they still have some like sites that are you can tell the uh, like this is an Australian, you know, like you can tell it has that British uh a flavor essentially to it. But then they're they're trying to bring back the old ways and teach those to the younger generation. And that's what you need. You know, you, you need even if like if it's something that essentially is outdated and you've moved past it towards a more modern view it's still good to know to know your roots to know where you your family came from and especially in a country like india that was the heart essentially of like the ancient world like everything passed through you guys you know like you couldn't go from China to Europe. Everything had to essentially go through India. Um, so you, you you guys played a huge part in the development of, well, hell, to be honest, where we are today in, in, in country um, or in the world. It's just always good to pay respects in that way. It's definitely always that's good what, to keep that going. That's what actually got me uh, interested in uh, reading Indian history. Really? Because... Uh, I can tell you something uh, and you can take my word for it. Okay. The history that we are taught in school is utter nonsense. I can use really? uh, I can use another word but I won't. You can. You can say whatever you want here man. It's bullshit. Bullshit. Yes. Yeah. Everything. It's political bullshit. The, the British wrote our history. Mm. They brainwashed us with it. Yes. And very unfortunately the people who uh, succeeded the British Raj mm-hmm. continued with the nonsense yeah. for their own political benefits. So th- there was no, unless you start reading the old documents, unless you start digging the past yourself, there is no way to learn the authentic Indian history. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, as you said, it's important to know where you came from, yes. where your roots are. So that's what uh, got me started uh, with uh, my study of Indian history. Well, I like that because, again, I'm from America. Especially right now, you know, depending on who you ask, there's a lot of shit going on over here. I don't know how much of it you guys get, but Probably if you guys have some idea of what's going on over here. Um, but since, again, since I started doing this and reaching out to other countries, people around the world, I get that as well. 
Um, like, like I mentioned earlier, you know, in, in my grade school, my history, my social studies, whatever the class was, a lot of Indian history was never really taught. So I'm only fine. I'm 30 years old right now. I'm only finding out this, you know, like a, within the last year, a good chunk of what I'm, what I'm finding out. And one of the things that really stuck out, and I'm, I'm wondering, I want to know if you know about this in your um, look into history that you've been doing. I was supposed to speak with a guy from uh, West Bengal about a month ago. We had, we had to cancel that. Some, some stuff came up. Uh, but into looking into history of West Bengal, I came across this uh, Indian mathematician from way, way back in the day. And I want to see if I'm not, uh, I'm not going to try and pronounce his name. Do you know that name? Ramagupta. Ramagupta, yes. Okay. So I'm assuming you know who he is and what he's brought to society. I don't know a whole lot about him, honestly, but okay. uh, he was one of the, uh, so there was this uh, school of mathematics in ancient India. Mm -hmm. uh, Bengal had it uh, uh, and uh, what is now Pakistan. Mm -hmm. That part was very, uh, was home to at least two uh, major universities of ancient world mm -hmm. where people came from all over, at least Asia, if not beyond, mm -hmm. and they studied. And uh, this guy, Brahmagupta, was one of the uh, leading mathematicians of his time. That's what I know about him. And uh, the, the unfortunate part is that starting 7th century AD or maybe 8th mm -hmm. century AD, mm -hmm. ever since the foreign invasions and conquests started, a lot of material on ancient yeah. India is lost to history. Mm -hmm. A lot of documentation, a lot of manuscripts, yep. a lot of uh, architecture, all that is gone. So all we have is a memory. Yeah. And if yeah. I tell someone that India, ancient Indians did this or ancient Indians did that, they ask for proof. They ask for yeah. some evidence. And there is no way. It. Yeah, well, that, that was one of the things that's kind of going on with Brahma Gupta? Yes. Yeah, so, so uh, one of the things... He probably did a lot of uh, research uh, like uh, our modern mathematicians do. Mm -hmm. And he came up with a lot of stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, as far as I know, uh, not a whole lot of his documentation, his records are uh, survived to our times. Yes. Yeah, the thing, how I came across him was, and you're right, like it's, it's in debate. Depending on who you ask, it's debatable. But one of the articles highlighted him as one of the uh, early fathers, you could say, of gravity, like the theory of gravity. You know, we, we look at gravity as, you know, Sir Isaac Newton. Yeah. Um, he's the main, the main guy that's in all the books in history. And then you, I mean, you can go, you can go back far in like ancient Greek time. I think it was Socrates or Aristotle that they have like some document that like he had, he had an idea of something, yes, yes. but it, he didn't put it in writing as well as Newton had, but in between both of them was Brahmagupta. And he essentially came up with, he called it something else. Obviously he had an Indian word for it, um, but it was basically the theory of gravity in his own interpretation. And see, and that, that caught me off guard because I'm like, okay, I know, you know, Aristotle, Socrates, all of them. And obviously I know Isaac Newton, but I don't know this guy, you know? And one of the, one of the arguments against him was, well, he borrowed off of so-and-so's work. I was like, well, everybody borrowed off of so-and-so's work. You know, that's, that's how you come up with this kind of stuff. You know, I'm sure Newton learned a little bit from, you know, his forefathers in science and everything looked at their notes that was around and added to it. Isaac Newton also looked at some Indian material. That's for sure. For sure. There is, for there, is sure. Evidence for, there is evidence for that. Yeah. I mean, like, but I don't know this guy. You know, I don't know this guy. I know, I know the white people. You know what and, I'm not <laughs> and not only Isaac Newton, uh, the Wright brothers who are credited with uh, inventing yes. the aeroplane. Yes. I came across that one too. I, yeah. 
Oh man, I've I had totally forgotten about that one until just now. I looked they into have access to an Indian's uh, research. Yeah, and they were like a few years apart. And if I remember, correct me if I'm wrong. If I remember correctly, the Indian guy did it. Oh no, you you say what you want because I, I I don't want to be wrong. But I do oh, remember that's, the story. That's okay. Uh, right, because that way I can correct uh, your perceptions if I need okay. to, or we can exchange views. Yeah. So if I remember correctly. This is about a month ago when I looked into this. Um, the Wright brothers are credited with it in the books, right? And if I remember correctly, the argument between the Wright brothers and the Indian inventor was the fact that the Wright brothers had it pushed or pulled. Their plane was pulled, I think. So it, it was assisted, whereas the Indian inventor was not assisted. That, that, that's one thing about it if I remember correctly. Um, and right now that's all I remember. So, so, so tell, tell me your side, because I do vaguely recall this. So what I remember reading, because I haven't read, read about it in, in a while. So what I remember mm -hmm. is this, the Indian guy's flight was, a, it was an unmanned flight, but it was uh, several years or at least a few years before the Wright brothers. And Wright mm -hmm. Brothers uh, did, uh, I think, a manned demo, if I remember right. Yes. Uh, because India was a colony back then, the British uh, authorities uh, did everything to prevent this guy from uh, doing further research. And he was uh, a typically poor Indian, uh, lower middle class mm -hmm. guy. So he had financial difficulties and consequently all sorts of difficulties. Even though some uh, philanthropists uh, offered to help him, the British uh, authorities wouldn't have it. Mm. So, uh, and I, what I read, uh, I remember reading once is that his uh, descendants, he was uh, long after he was gone, they sold uh, his, some of his research papers to an American guy. Oh. Dunce. Yeah, I, I, I'm pulling it up right now. Let's see, I'm gonna I'm share it for you. All right. So, so this aircraft was contemporary accounts of a successful flight or evidences of such achievement do not exist. Well, let's see, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, it seems like e even in this, it's kind of like, eh, who do you, you know, it depends That's on who Wikipedia. you ask. I, I stopped yeah. uh, taking Wikipedia seriously <laughs> and back. I mean, yeah, w when anybody can put it, stuff into it, you know, kind of. But it's like you were saying, you know, back then it was who had the most power, you know? Ooh. And so if this lonely, you know, Indian inventor had something successful, you know, if a more powerful entity wanted to come around and take it for themselves or deny it, that happened. You know, like you, you look at Edison and Tesla, you know, they went to yes, war yes, and yes. Edison won. And, you know, it took us a while to really look back at Tesla's achievements and like, whoa, shit, he was he was onto something. He was better, you know, but Edison was stabbed awesome. him. He, yeah, but Edison stabbed, stabbed him in the back. He had more power. He had more money. And that happened a lot back then. I know there's kind of the same thing with the invention of the telephone. You know, Alexander Graham Bell is credited for it, but the, they say, you know, he stole the, the pat or he paid off the patent. Yeah, it was company. someone else's idea. Probably. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, they paid off. He paid off the patent for it uh, for them not to patent the other guy. And he came out with his just uh, like a day or so later, uh, if, something like that. Um, and yeah, when, when you look into that stuff and we know stuff like that are facts, when you hear these other accounts that, like, like with um, the Indian, you know, like you said, paperwork's not really existing anymore. You kind of kind of go off word of mouth and, you know, what he said, she said, it, it, it's, it's debatable, but there's enough evidence out there to make it be possible, you know? The way it makes sense, like it, it totally could be. And that that is one thing that is very aggravating when you come across stuff like that. 
especially uh, for an indian who is uh, interested in his uh, country's history very much because of uh, the foreign interventions mm -hmm. over such a long period of time we have a sort of disconnected from our our ancient heritage yeah yeah cuz you don't think to do uh, no, if i have to explain to you something about ancient india and mm. if i have to uh, tell you something about ancient india it's and you don't believe me i can understand that yeah. but when a fellow indian uh, laughs at me when i say something that's that's really painful yeah oh no i uh, yeah and it 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 sucks a lot to as as a westerner who granted it wasn't you know necessarily my people that did it but of course you know i know it's a thing um cuz one thing about america is we are extremely prideful people you know sometimes for the wrong reason we're very ignorantly prideful um but we are very prideful individuals and when it comes to countries like that that were occupied for x amount of hundreds of years from various you know empires over, over the course of their history you know like like you said some some somebody could have invented something but then you know their occupational boss master or whatever you want to call them could take it for themselves and make it now the british invented this even though you know it was the indian person who worked for them you know we know of some accounts of this but we don't know what has still been lost you know so there could be there could be numerous other things that were invented from the a different country than what's in the history books you know True. who who and we probably will never know you know um, but it's definitely the ones that we do we do learn and we do figure out even if you still want to say it's debatable that's fine just acknowledge that it's possible you yeah. know look, look at the evidence that is there and give credit where credit's due to think that you know the europeans invented everything under the under the modern sun is just stupid you know you look at ancient china and ancient chinese inventions they invented a shit ton of stuff yes and they get credit for it you know and th they should but yeah, like when you look at, okay, what did Indians invent way back in the day? There's not a lot. There's not a lot that I'm aware of. But to say There's they didn't come up. There's a lot of documentary evidence. Uh, yeah. Because, because China was never really under European occupation. They were under European influence, but mm -hmm. it's not the same as occupation. And, and to think that a country of that size, of that many people, didn't invent things every now and then is stupid. That is just straight ignorant right there. You got billions of people. Somebody's inventing something, some cool ass shit somewhere. I remember I did my first Indian uh, episode with Umvesh from Lucknow. We pulled up uh, young inventors that the country has. And one of them was this, this like at the, at the time of the article, he was like 13 or 14. He, he might have been from, from Pune, I don't, I don't remember, but he was like software guru kid. He like created like 12 apps, you know, for phone companies and whatnot. And there, there, was, there was one, if I remember correctly, he invented like a wheelchair that can help the elderly get up stairs and steps and whatnot. And he was like 14 or 15. So you got some incredibly intelligent people. That, that, are, that are pushing forward and trying to innovate and make, make their country better. Uh, to say that wasn't going on thousands of years ago, that's just stupid. That's just stupid. You might not know about this stuff, but to say they didn't come up with anything is just 100% ignorant, in my opinion. Um, so hopefully, somehow, some way, we, we've, the, you know, the country of India is able to find more evidence somewhere of achievements because stuff like that, that have improved the world that we stay live in today, one way or another, that is some cool stuff that everyone needs to be proud of if that came from your people. You know what I'm saying? Yes. 
So there is plenty of old uh, material available in our archives. So mm-hmm. the Pune archives alone, and it's not a very okay. big, considered a very big archive. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a uh, modest archive, but that mm-hmm. modest archive is home to forty million, some forty million uh, documents. Okay. We don't Are even you... know what's there in the uh, in those documents. So far, we have been able to read, study, analyze only maybe two million, two two and a half million. Okay. And because uh, history is not a big thing in India. Mm-hmm. It should be, but it is not. Yeah. Not many people are interested. And even if they are interested, uh, to, even fewer are willing to go to the archives and do their own research. Mm. So uh, that's a problem. And government, let's not even talk about it. Fair. Fair enough. I, I, I do agree with the whole, even, even here in the States, like my love of history is kind of like how you described it for you. It's more of a hobby. Right. Like you love reading history books and finding out more. But to make a career out of that kind of stuff these days is not that easy. You know, if you want to make money off of it, um, you know, Indiana Jones times, that was was, it's a movie for a reason. You know what I'm saying? Um, But it's it's a cool thing to know. And I think just the definitely the younger generation today are just so much into technology and what's going on now and tomorrow. They're, they don't care to look into the past. Um, so like, like you, you know, you read the books. I, you know, I scour the internet looking at, looking at various things and I'm always intrigued to learn something new. I, I want to ask you though, or then since you've been doing this whole history deep dive that you got going on, what is the biggest shock that you've come across that you've learned about either your history of India or in general, oh, there are there are so many shocks mm-hmm. that uh, you become uh, numb to those shocks. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, would you believe me if I tell you that uh, the pre second largest economy and uh, controlled nearly a quarter of world uh, world trade at the time in the seventeenth century? S- say that one more time. You cut out. Okay, uh, I said, uh, for example, would you believe me if I tell you that the pre-British India controlled nearly a quarter of world trade uh, in the 17th, 18th century and was the second largest economy with nearly 24% share in world trade? That's one. I would believe that though. I would. Not many people do. Not many Indians yeah. do. Yes. They mock, they laugh. Anyways, good on them. (laughs) Second shock was that Pune, my city, Pune, Mm -hmm. was served was as the de facto capital of India for nearly a century. I do know that. Yeah, I I I, I just I I just learned that like an hour ago. I did not. uh, (laughs) I was not fully aware of the uh, of the facts uh, related Mm -hmm. to that uh, until I started reading some old documents not books the yeah, yeah. The, the actual documents uh quick question do you know what the ancient term for the city was the ancient name or pune? one of the ancient names yeah what it what it it, it was pune with something else and it stand it, it pune as a city is not that old so uh it was it like was one not, of the, yeah. let, let me just just in case i i am wrong i, I easily could be um da, 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 da. yeah the earliest this is it says the earliest reference to pune is an inscription in the rashtrakuta dynasty copper plate dated 937 ce which yes. refers to the town of punya vishaya meaning sacred news yes i learned that today <laughs> so it's not uh, maybe thousand years or maybe a little mm-hmm. more because we have an ancient temple in the city in the middle of city which mm-hmm. has miraculously survived all the all the nonsense that has been going on in the name yes. of development and progress uh it it is at least uh, 12 to 1300 year old mm-hmm. so 
so uh, the pune has that that much history but yes. then uh, about 500 years ago it was uh, not more than a village mm-hmm. until uh, the king who we all unanimously revere chhatrapati shivaji okay came to live here and uh, made pune his base all right that's when pune started to gain some prominence some importance and then maybe uh, uh maybe 40 years after that the 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 peshwas or the ancient prime ministers of india mm-hmm. uh, who were all powerful who were for all practical purposes they were the prime ministers of india mm-hmm. because they exercised so much authority uh, across the length and breadth of the country uh they were settled down in pune they built their palace here they settled down here and for the next 100 odd years they ruled uh, india from pune mm-hmm. and when they were defeated in 1818 the british did everything they could to wipe out their memory their palace was gunned oh, yeah, yeah. yeah their their palace was bombarded with guns mm-hmm. and all you see if you visit pune now all you see there is ruins is is that the is that the um castle fort that was like seven stories and it's yeah. now just the base yeah i came across that i came across that i i would love to see are there like uh pictures of what that place used to look like a seven story castle that you don't see seven uh, floors in there but uh, i think i have a couple of sketches okay done by i would love to see those i would love if if when we're done with this if, if you could send them i would I love to see that if i have it on this computer let me see otherwise i can uh, share it on reddit yes i would love to see that i would love that cuz yeah, i think i came across that um but it said like the only, it all the bombardment and artillery shells kind of made it took out all the other floors except for just the uh the the main floor the base floor so i would definitely love to see that um one of the things that 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 shocked me that i came across i recently did an episode with a man originally from bangladesh right and you know you guys have west bengal and the bengali language yes. i didn't know was is the seventh most spoken language in the whole world quite possible even i'm not aware of that fact <laughs> uh, according according to to figures anyways it's the seventh most popular or most spoken language in the world which i think english was first mandarin second i think hindi is like third or fourth if i recall correctly but then on down there uh bengali was this is the seventh and that that's just crazy to me cuz at least the country itself of bangladesh is pretty small even though obviously bengali is is spoken throughout that part of india as well that that's yes. near there um what got you started in this fascination with history was was there a moment no i as far as i remember and for as long as i remember i have been interested in history that mm-hmm. used to be my favorite topic a favorite yeah. subject in back in school yeah 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 uh, so i have been reading history for as long as i remember mm-hmm. uh, the only uh, difference is that uh, the uh, the stuff i read back in school as i said was all yeah. made up yeah and yeah. only in the recent years uh, i started reading some serious books and even the original documents i actually learned yeah. a few uh, languages and some scripts to, okay to be able to read uh, those documents because i did not want to rely on someone mm-hmm. else's analysis and perspective perce- perception and all that. yes well yeah, that's but... awesome that's awesome man like huge respect to you for that I love that cuz I only know English. I I want to know, I want to learn Mandarin, uh Japanese, German, Russian and Spanish. And more than likely with my love of India growing every time I speak to somebody from over there, I'm probably going to throw in Hindi at the same time. Um so that's the most popular one 
in, in over there. But man, Garoff, this this was cool. I liked it. To to find another person as into history as I am and to see the same bullshit differences, you know, to be able to point that out. I, I like that. I, I've I've enjoyed uh speaking to you. I would love to have you on again sometime to go more in depth of the differences that you've come Anything. across. Yeah, the different specifically the differences that you've come across and we can probably hopefully bounce some other stuff off each other, learn something new at, at the same time. Uh, but Garoff, man, once again, this was cool. I like this. This was really fun. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yes, I am a game for uh, talking about history, discussing history, India, and all that. So any time of the day. All right. Sounds good, man. I'm definitely going to have you on again at some point then. If there's anything you got going on that you want the people to know, I know I got you off Reddit, so I don't know if you have anything that people can join in with you on, on anything. But if you do, now's the time for you to... At uh, this promote. point, uh, I don't have anything, but yes, I'm working on a couple of things. Okay. I'm working on a couple of e uh, which are like enhanced reprints. <laughs> Okay. Those books have been around, uh, but forgotten, mostly forgotten for a hundred years or so. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, working on those books to bring them back because I do intend to uh, start my own small niche publishing uh, company uh, oh, in 2021. Okay. That's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. And I actually was uh, considering starting a podcast of my own. Do it. Yes, I will do it, but uh, I need to fiddle with, uh, I mean, experiment with different equipments because right now yes. all I have is this basic stuff, very mm -hmm. basic stuff. Oh, I good enough for calls. Well, see, like I started mine with just my phone, just, just my cell phone. It was my microphone before I got this one, my camera. Um, that's how I started. So I need it's possible. to spend time uh, learning the editing uh, softwares, uh, the Audacity yeah. or whatever, GarageBand. Yes, I recommend Audacity and DaVinci Resolve is another okay. free video. If you add video, it's the free video software. That's what I use. So Can those are my recommendations. Name? Can you please ping da me the name? DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve. Yes, sir. That that's that's what I recommend. It's highly used. It's 100% free as well. They're not a sponsor, but DaVinci, if you hear this and you want to sponsor me, that'd be great. <laughs> um, I got the website. Okay. It's great. I love it. But Gareth, man, definitely do that. Start your podcast. When you get, are your books going to be in English? Yes. At, at least uh, two of them uh, will be in English. Okay. One, the other one, I'm but uh, I do intend to translate uh, all my books in different languages to, to maximize the reach. Yes. Well, uh, put them in English, send me the link, and I'll get one. I will. I, I will promise. Definitely. I will get one from you. Um, I'll help you out. I'll do what I can. Hopefully, whenever, whenever you get your podcast situated, I can have you back on. We'll promote your podcast. I don't have a big reach, but I have something. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll do what I can because... You're a lover of history. I'm a lover of history. I love India. You live in India. It, it, it'll be cool, man. Uh, Gareth, once again, thank you very much. I enjoyed my time talking with you. You have yourself a good day, sir. Yes, you have. Uh, it's almost time to go to bed. Oh, man. All right. You have a good one, man. You have a good day.